Let's get going here. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. The, uh, here we are again, oh boy, talking about our favorite subject, right? <laughs> yeah, me in. Um, I did send everybody an agenda and I did send everybody uh, the Ordis letter again. And pardon me for that. I meant to send you the Black Hills letter, but this is the paper copy of the Black Hills letter uh, that they sent us after their presentation, which is the, their, their proposal for how to, how to move forward. Um, let's see, we'll do a quick roll call. I'm here, Carol, Doug, Kirk, Emily, and Kathy. And we have Walters on the phone. And anybody online? Uh, we have one attendee, Jerry Fry. Jerry Fry. Morning, Jerry. And she's in attendee mode, so she, right, so she gonna... can't answer. Sorry. Yeah, we'll okay. <laughs> <laughs> but glad you could join us. Um, I didn't put any old business down because really the, the, the field is wide open, but I figured that what we need to talk about is our path forward. Um, Ordis um, sent me an email uh, request of the, I did invite them to, uh, after we re received their letter of interest, I did invite them to make a presentation to the committee and they, they want to come in February 28th. And so I wanted to poll everybody and see if that works for everybody to have them to not be, so it won't be next time, but the time after next. Already? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sheesh. Pretty soon it'll be time to plant the garden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Speak to yourself. <laughs> so, Mr. Chair, I, I was sure if we could, I don't know if it's the old business. I mentioned the idea last time, or maybe whichever, but I just wondered if we could talk a little bit more about the pros and cons of adding some more on this committee since we've mm. lost a warm body, so to speak, <laughs> with Brandon Smith. Uh, with, you know, not just kind of traded more bodies. Well, except we went from well, certain yeah, so. yeah. Andrea Stein. Well, she's on council. council. Yeah. So we should probably need them. So no, anyway, I didn't well, know Brandon was also. Include that under old business or new business. Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. Um, so so there's, there's, there's pluses and minuses to that, having another voice on the committee. Is um, you know is, is nice, but the, the problem is is that we've already come a long way down the road. I know that there are other community members that if we're going to be adding people, like to be included in that. Uh, and so I, I, the way the way I'm looking at it is, uh, with all the history that we've got and all the uh, you know presentations that we've sat through, and everything, and we're probably good. Uh, with with our membership uh, the way we are is, is what my feeling is. But you know, this is what what are you all? Think? I'm cool with that. Yeah, I think that's like the best way to do. I hate to have to bring somebody up to speed, so oh, yeah. to speak. Yeah, that would be a lot of a lot of yeah. Of course, we we still have some really large things to come. I'm assuming from who's for. I was we didn't have make it so. I'm sorry. <laughs> maybe instead of making uh, anybody a permanent member, maybe it would make sense to bring in subject experts as we move forward, like to analyze what core and um, everybody else has to offer. Maybe at that time, it might be wise to at least bring them in as a, kind of a consultant to the group. Um, I think it's important if we were to add somebody, they need to have a clue about each other's. Did you have some, were you thinking of oh, something I, specifically? I or? just wanted to see what the committee thought. I mean, the way the resolution was worded that the council passed last spring, and uh, some of the numbers were more precise than others. Uh, I think we have 
the maximum number of community members on, but we didn't get business members. So that's one thought. Another thought is Canyon City Center teachers were just designated as having two, and that's what Carol and I have been. And now, I mean, I either wear two hats <laughs> or I don't, depending on how you look at that. Well, and you know, not, she'll hate me probably for saying it, but I reached out to Jerry and did get her uh, thing back because she'd been at a lot of the yeah. uh, and I did trade meetings, did you? Her. Yeah, I Jerry I would, would be willing if yeah, yeah. Willing to yeah. So she would be. You know, Is she but, on the Energy Future Committee also? Yeah, 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 and she has been from day one, and you know, and she was actually. She was a business member when yeah, she started. Yeah, she wasn't a business member exactly. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, she she knows what we know. Let's put it that way. I have a little bit of a thought process about that, Emily. Even though you're on council, you're also a very ardent member of that group, and I think we have enough representation. And it, just so everyone knows, there's no pressure at all. But there was only six of us. We can't lose anybody. So yeah. <laughs> we are taking care of yourself. Yeah. 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 I think that's a good idea, Kathy, to maybe bring in, I don't know who they'd be. I don't either. But, but I think that's a good idea to bring in the community. You know, in other groups that I'm involved in, we do have some outside, you know, objective people to just analyze what we've seen. So that might be helpful to figure out who that would be. You know, I mentioned this before, and it would require uh, possibility of, I know we can't spend funds, but I would really like to visit some of these communities that have these organizations serving them. That even if heard, by, that, even that if we, by Zoom or something. That, that we have heard from, yeah. yeah. That if we've got uh, proposals and presentations. Mm -hmm. You know, the other, the, uh, the other thing that we could put on the two visit list is I'm sure that either San Isabel or CORE would be more than happy to host us uh, or, even, or even Black Hills at their operations center. Uh, to show us what uh, a little bit of what goes on, some of the day-to-day -day things, uh, you know, the, the issues that the actual that both operators, so to speak, of the system see uh, on a daily basis. If you, I have I've had opportunity to do that, uh, visit at San Isabel, and it's uh, it, it, it's certainly worthwhile. In my view. Different perspective. Well, just the big guys. <laughs> see, see what, yeah, see what you know, around, that, yeah. that if we want to hire uh, or maintain, you know, if we want to uh, do a different relationship with a, with a service provider, maintain our, our relationship with a service provider, it'd be good to see what they, what they, what they go through, what their system uh, and its operation looks like. It's pretty, it's pretty interesting to know the capabilities and some of the, some of those kinds of things. So that's that's something that we could, uh, could um, also consider as well as uh, maybe seeing a, a community. It's a little bit hard to to get a community spokesperson. It is. I was just thinking of that. How do you how do you choose who you listen to? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I agree. I totally agree. Uh, so if I understand where the, uh, everyone's position, the, the, at this time, I think that we're not between, um, you know, adding a new voice uh, to the committee at this point. Uh, and uh, we'll just continue going on as we are. I think we've got, I think we've got a good group. Um, anything else you'd like to say? Okay. Uh, under old business, I actually had a question, uh, and and it's for Steve. Steve, did you the at our last meeting you had a question about the operation of the two different plants over at the uh, airport generating station? Yeah, 
Uh, and you said you're going to send an email to Black Hills uh, detailing those that question. Yeah. Um, I thanks, John. I um, looked into those numbers, and I had an erroneous interpretation when I posed my question. Oh. And um, uh, it's brought to my attention by a third party to whom I submitted a draft. You know, technically, anything wrong with this? And he said, "Well, here's a here's an EQR. It's a it, it, what you sent me was sixteen thousand two hundred seventy three lines of an Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> I might have been off by a hundred or so, but it's about sixteen thousand. <laughs> so your answer's in here. And, um, <laughs> I'm still processing. Uh, He's on the It's still an open question, perhaps. It is, but I phrased my question inappropriately. What, what, what the statement I made, sort of a statement question, was why don't we use the Black Hills owned 200 megawatt generator more than the uh, subsidiary owned generator? And um, Indeed, the subsidiary owned generator is much more expensive, but not to operate as the market survey showed the cost to actually operate the plant were they were within a tenth of a penny. It was nothing. Yeah. But the the demand charge, uh, which is listed in the you know for form one here, this stuff <laughs> um, <clears throat> is very substantial. It's $45 million a year. Um, but you can't charge that. You, sorry, you can't divide that volumetrically. And that was the error I was making. Um, and uh, that's a pretty big error. So it's still a problem. And, and I, as I'm looking through all the demand charges that have been 16,000 of them uh, all around the West, that's just the West. That's not back East, that's Tucson Electric and a vista and people you, groups you've never heard of, but they, generally speaking, what I'm finding is that they all charge less for their demand charge than Black Hills does. Uh, but I don't have access to Black Hills contract. That's a proprietary thing. So at least I believe it is. So um, I'm still shoveling through data and it will take me a while. Thanks for recalling, and I, my, apologies, <laughs> my apologies for uh, not having, I'm probably only at about 9,000 9, now, uh, but uh, <laughs> I actually am going through them all uh, and looking at, you know, Burlington Center, all the, you know, the Excel ones, and, and it's, it's telling an interesting story only to a data nerd. <laughs> only, only. Yes, okay. it's it's so I'll get back to you if I ever if I survive this. Yeah, you're more than halfway there. Yeah, I'm more than halfway there. He's I'm rounding. I'm so almost rounding. I'm in the back spread. <laughs> oh, thank, thank, thanks for that. The I thought it was, a, uh, you know, if the if the question had the correct assumption, it was a, a germane question and yeah. was interested in you, but. Yeah. Sounds like that we've we got to look at assumptions first before we yeah, they, get to the meeting. And one key assumption is wrong. Yeah. Uh, and nobody we're pointed it out to me until last week. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> okay. So the um, then in so I've sent everybody the um, meetings and schedule that I've been. That I've been keeping, and we've got just we only we're only out two meetings into the future right now with uh, this one next February 14th Valentine's Day. Are we somebody better bring? Are you cookies? are you no, going to throw a pink party? I I'll leave that to other members. I think that January 19th should that be removed? Oh, that should. Thank you. Yeah. For the February meeting, we we did, but then we, we then we said no, we're not going to make that. One. I think we did. We move it to March. I think we're on a we're on a vision committee meeting. I just don't remember which one. Would you let me know what that is? Yep, I will check with Cindy right now. The last I had seen was February twenty third. 
but if we're bumping that. So, so in my agenda, but on the uh, on the copy that I keep, I have. Well, I have February twenty third vision. Yeah. So we're still on for February twenty third. As of right now, that is correct. Okay. But if the about what that means. Yeah. Well, we may not even have this. So we won't, because we won't have the orchestra presentation, which I can do. And I think what we can wait till the Yeah. And that, that would be right. So, so on that, have we heard from either Brian Core or um, or Goosebond on there, um, what they have taken on. We, I, I'd be happy to reach out to them to see where they're at in their timeline. So they, Core was thinking that they, they might get something done around Thanksgiving. You know, that date was coming past. So they didn't say which year. And they, <laughs> they, they, they that was the, that, that might have been a room of no, area. It was February, not Thanksgiving. <laughs> I mean, I don't remember Thanksgiving. Well, we saw them in September and October. Yeah. So October. No, I, I it was end of September, and then it went to council the first meeting in October. Yeah. And they requested 120 days. Right. October. Which is not necessary. November, December, January. So that would yeah, be it, it ended up being like March 1st was the end yeah, of 120 March days. Or yeah. something like that. Yeah. And then Guzman, I think they were at 100 days, and theirs came in middle of March, I believe. That's so, yeah. It's a little premature, isn't it? But yeah, yeah, I think I'd scratch the vision. Yeah, we absolutely. And even yes. March. Yeah. March yeah. 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 Right. So, since we gave the presentation in December. So, uh -huh. so what we what we need to do is the I think that there are some kind of fill in things that we can do between now and a final you know report or whatever whatever our product is. But we do we do need to hear from these we do need to hear from Ford. Okay. We want to hear from Orvis. Uh, we may want to go see a operation center, which would be a nice thing. But 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 other than that, until we get those, it seems to me that we're that there's not a lot of other progress that we can make right now. One, one thing, and I, I said this very little bit of information to the group yesterday. That's about the webinar I attended. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that. You, no, you sent me the link, but I didn't have a chance. Oh, well, you, you know, sent that to everybody. Yeah, I so. Yeah, this group for all these self reliance is doing a whole lot of work in regard to well, a lot of things, but electric utilities around the company or country, rather. Uh, and so I'm hoping that they will provide the materials from that webinar. And so, that, you know, there might even be a recording of that. Um, really quite useful um, to see the work that's occurring in the various states around. Investor owned utilities. In Maine, um, the consumers are trying to buy the company basically, yeah. and their state public utilities commission, whatever it's called, had determined a couple of years back mm -hmm. that they could legally do that. And well, I think the governor vetoed it, so now it's going to be a citizen initiative on the ballot there. So there's just a lot going on that might be useful material for us if I can. Get some more of that. I read through some of it. It was very interesting. Yeah. So, and of course, so, I wondered if I should sell my stock in you know, the utility. <laughs> Who knows? The was landscape was changing. <laughs> how, how long? Well, the webinar was an hour, and then they had what they called an after party. So, mm -hmm. it was another hour of an <laughs> excellent discussion with some of these folks. So, I'm not sure if they reported only the first hour. So, um, so at the Maybe if I can suggest, if you can find out if the webinar is available, maybe that's something that we as a committee need to watch. Right. Yeah. Like I would think it would be very. We certainly have the. We certainly have the 
the capability yeah, to do something like that. I, I have an email in the two groups and I'll follow up with everyone just going back to the presentation up to the vision committee um so i'm going to remove us from february 23rd uh we are open right now on april 20th so i'm going to pencil us in on april 20th if that works for everybody okay why don't you do that and <clears throat> because it's those are those are they get booked up for yes. us yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so so let's get our marker in there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. And yeah. Um, Emily, I have a question to ask. What's democratizing? Democratizing the grid? Is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yes. Well, I think it's the idea that there is this trend or whatever you want to call it in the country to kind of update the whole idea of who runs the grid, who runs the electric grid. Or, you know, is it an investment owned utility everywhere? Or is it something that consumers should be involved? In owning and making decisions. So that I think that's it's a control it's issue. And that it's just apparently, and New Mexico was one of the states that there was some information. About. But there's that um, organization has a lot of information about what's happening around the country. Was there any, was there uh, like a uh, Concise, or was there? What, what's the thought process behind it? Is it just the fact that they're getting that the way electricity is being changed as far as the way it's being used, and so that's kind of the impetus for this type of thought process? Or I think what they presented, the couple of examples they presented, it was really just huge dissatisfaction with the companies. Uh, apparently, they alleged that Maine has the worst investor owned utility in the country <laughs> in terms of everything you can think of cost, customer service, whatever. And I believe they said, they just kind of mentioned in passing that in Maine, I just don't know the details, that they separated generation from transmission years ago. So I think we're talking about a company that oversees transmission, not the generation part. But well, it's, it's really, um, I think that's the impetus behind it. So Steve, I, I've been retired just long enough and I've slept a lot of time since then, but I'm thinking that transmission has already been sort of separated from the distribution because I know with XL, there's parts of the downtown building that not the general employee can go into and stuff. So I want, it was, so basically I think the city, Transmission has to be separated somehow, and that may be because of the open market of buying, you know, out there. But is, is this a little bit different than what's already available in yeah, utilities? They, well, they didn't. They were mostly talking about these case studies in May in New Mexico. But I mean, there's lots and lots more oh, studies out there. But I, I really think that the impetus is just this dissatisfaction with what regulated monopolies are doing in the electric. But I is, is my memory not serving me properly, which it doesn't a lot of time, uh, was one of those two states where it wasn't working out real well, either New Mexico or Maine. Oh, so oh yeah. New process or what? Yeah. The, the states that they focused on the most were New Mexico and Maine. So that's right. the center. Is that what you're asking? Right. right. Are they far enough I down could the be road, though, to, not to thinking right. you thinking know, determine whether these new ideas are working well? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, <laughs> well, I thought they had been implemented in those communities. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is different than community choice. Oh, yeah, 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 this is yeah. okay. No, this is not community choice. This is who gets to own the company kind of thing. 
Because we did we did hear that yes. where the did not yeah. appear to be yeah. working out as, as yeah. perhaps people would hope. But so the remember, okay, what 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 we're here to do is review, evaluate, and make recommendations concerning the energy option for the city to right. And so we've got to come to a conclusion at some point. We can't just use this as a uh, you know, let's study the issue because right. it's going to go on and on, and as things change, things will change. You know, so we've got to, we've got to, we're going to have to draw the line at some point and say, okay, we have enough information to make recommendations concerning the, here, you know, here are the options, here are the recommendations uh, that that we can make decisions. So, so the, so just keep that in mind. That that probably when we get to that point will be shortly after when we'll need to do that will be shortly after we receive the Guzman and the core proposals uh, and whatever we've got you know that'll be what we've got and we can note that there are you know things are changing and that there are political forces uh, uh, on the march that will change things further in the future. Uh, and so we're not going to have, we're not going to be able to, to make a recommendation from perfect knowledge because it, it, things will change. You know? To me, I think you're segueing to Black Hill's letter. Mm -hmm. And frankly, I think that this should be put on the back burner for the moment because we don't have enough information, even if we knew something by, say, the end of April after we talked about that gives you what six months to put together a election on the ballot or whatever. And although Black Hills, I like the comment that they say is open to addressing the incremental costs. Well, the company pays for the franchise election anyway. So that's a given. And so to me, even if they have to have a special election after the general election or whatever, that's fine. But I think we're pushing it to try and put it on this ballot. So, so the, and, and what you're talking about is that their proposal is we propose to submit a new franchise and complementing partnership agreement to the voters in November 2022. Okay, uh, so that, that is to Ryan. This letter is to Ryan, so technically it's to city council, right, and, as well as us, right? Okay, so so I think that that that's entirely appropriate. That we don't we don't at this point we don't need to make a decision to accept or reject this proposal, but it's not timely because we don't have all of that. And what I would say is that this committee recommends to the council that this not be addressed at this time. Does that make sense? At the very least, it seems as if we should hold on to this yeah. and wait to see what we get before and this one. What we may it? decide is that, you know, as Kathy was alluding to a little bit ago, once we have what, whatever we get with them, and I have no clue what that will look like, we may need some expert assistance in reviewing those. So, I would say at the very least, this needs to be held until we get to that point. And if this is, I mean, I, I'm taking this, and I hope I'm understanding their letter correctly, that this is their proposal to us, just as we will receive the proposal from the floor if we lose money. And so let's look at all of them in the same time. Sure. Uh, and what, what I would recommend there is that, is that, um, and, and this is, this is, for this for discussion for now. But what I would recommend is that that this letter be given to city council and that with with your next administrator report, note that this letter has come in and 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 as every does and can we say as a committee to this question for you all that that our our recommendation to council would be to take no action on this letter at this time. Until we see, uh, because we do expect to receive things from Newsman and and, uh, and Core, yep. and so if you could include that in your administrator report and say this is advice or this is a, a heads up, City Council, we do have this letter. 
uh, you know, the Energy Committee uh, is still working. They still have goals. Uh, they still are awaiting information. And yep. so, yeah, I, I can do that. And uh, yeah, I will just uh, state that uh, you know, the Energy Committee wants to evaluate this proposal side by side with the other proposals yeah. that we're yeah, expecting. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Well, that's under the third one. And just, yeah, potentially from worse. Correct. Yeah. Uh, just, just so the committee knows, uh, you know, as far as the November uh, 2022 election goes, typically by the end of June, beginning of July, we have to let the county know whether or not we're going to participate in a coordinated election. And then we have to have any ballot language finalized, um, typically by the first or second meeting in August. So the other way to say that, this is, <clears throat> John, this is not a no, <laughs> <laughs> but we don't have the information yet to, 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 to be able to evaluate and recommend uh, because we don't have the other things. So there still is time. That doesn't mean that, that we're going to run out of time. Uh, and but but and so it's a possibility, but we're not going to take action on it at this point. Just made your day. <laughs> I'm just here to observe. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so answer questions if there are any. We appreciate that. Tell you what, I don't want to play poker against John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're yes on Ortis. Uh, the on our path forward, we do have kind of a rough outline uh, because we are expecting the you know, use bond and core to come in with information and perhaps even orders after they make the presentation. Uh, and so what that means then is that we'll probably have our meetings in March, I will extend to March on our meetings and schedule. And if we're looking at April 20th, at least the first one in April. John? Yeah. Can you give what? I tried to kind of read through this, and I have to admit that I didn't delve into it as deeply as I could, even when we had them. What the hell is Ortis? What are they doing? And are they attached to the city, or what's going on? Okay, so so no, they're not attached to the city. Okay, okay, they are. They are. Um, I guess I would say an investment company. It's what I have. A, what what my feeling is. I don't know if they would agree with that. Okay. But essentially what they're talking about is an investment opportunity that, uh, for a project that they've got. And right now it's, I don't know, and that's something we'll hear from them, what, at what stage their project is. But what their project is, as I understand it, is essentially to use solar power to pump water up. Between, or you have a lower reservoir and an upper reservoir. Use solar power to pump water up during the day during sunlight hours. And then at night, uh, when there is no solar power, uh, use the water up there to run through turbines to generate okay, it's to become a hydro. So it's, it's, it's like a, it's a modified hydro okay. type thing. So, so it's like battery storage, essentially. Okay, so basically, power. they're hoping to do this and then sell the generation on the market or to a utility or whomever wants to buy it. I think that's all yes. Yes. Okay. So this is kind of a private and uh, private deal. They whose water are they using? I mean, they've <laughs> got to have water rights that's somehow. Right? And so is this like on the Walker Ranch? Do and does Walker have water? You know, I guess I'm just kind of real so curious this about would be in Phantom Canyon. Phantom Oh, okay. Over by Brush oh, Hollow. So it's okay. I'll be thrilled about that. Who? Well, <laughs> oh, isn't that Beaver? Brush Beaver? Yeah, in Brush Hollow area. I, I, it's, it's between here and yeah, I thought it was south of Brush Hollow. Okay. So it would not it's involve Brush Hollow. No, yeah. it would not. Right. It would not involve Brush Hollow. Is this county? Yeah. That's 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 probably correct. I, yeah. I, I I think my my idea is, is incorrect. 
that's probably correct because there the I did talk to it, Sam. it might not be that far east. Yeah, I did talk to Sam, and what he said is that on the water rights issue is that what what they uh, what may make the project work is being able to utilize unused Canyon City water rights. At least I'm, I'm, I'm used at this point. So <laughs> how did they propose to get? I would suspect since Canyon City owns nearly the majority of hydraulic water, how would they propose to get the water east? I, I think those details are what they have to work out still. If you're going to get water east, why don't they just develop everything north of Highway 50 like they've been wanting to do for years on the road up to Cap Cane? If you can get water that far, exactly. Yeah, oh, exactly. So I think I'm off. Well, no, but I'm just saying, if you're going to take they, water, they still have east, to get it north. Yeah, just you know, water doesn't well, flow that way. Correct me if I'm wrong. I thought at the most recent city, city, county meeting that we informally asked county commissioners what they knew about this, and they said there's nothing current that there was something proposed years ago, if I remember correctly. Yes. So, at least from what we know so far, there's no current active project uh, that's involving the county. Uh, it's a lot of, I think it's a lot of speculation. I mean, if you think about it, who's going to pay to pump the water east so that they can set up a pretend hydro system? I don't. <laughs> I just don't. I see this as trying to connect through us to help get city. To cooperate to me that's my initial so right. so, so so rick and i rick carmen our economic development manager and i sat down with sam houston uh prior to them knowing that the city was going through the you know had the energy committee uh this was a project that they were working on before they found out about the energy committee okay. uh they do own land uh over there in the area so um it, it's progressed further than when it sounds like the county commissioners might have been involved but um, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the previous dealings were. Uh, when we met with uh, Mr. Houston a few months ago, this was the first I'd heard of this project. Did Did Black Hills turn over the water rights from Clark to the city, or did they? they sold them. Them? No, we sold them, and we um, gave the proceeds to the city. But that was ditch. Well, same ditch. It was a ditch. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, but who was the buyer? But, was it a ditch company? The yeah. buyer? Okay. Yeah. And hydraulic is decreed for uh, municipal, industrial, and agriculture. And that's the ditch that yeah. they're talking. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. So I guess this is the first time I heard about it. So <laughs> yeah, you're only on it, you know. Okay. So so or Ryan, the the city's water rights are in the ditch or we've got we've got different water rights so I mean, like a portfolio of water rights. yeah mo most of them are attached to the different various ditches and ditches. yeah and you'd have to go through water court in order to either move a diversion point or change them from uh flow through rights to um storage or consumptive yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, right. that that would be a fairly long process yeah. yes yeah, it, 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 it takes a year just to get on the court docket. For water there was courts. something in the paper this morning about Cripple Creek and the water court yeah. district, too. Well, hydropower is nice. Well, yeah. And what's so interesting, that's so funny because it's kind of like um, I just found out that Excel is closing down. They have a small hydro that's up outside of Salida. Yeah, and they're closing it down. And I'm thinking, God, why the hell didn't they put solar up there? Because it faces the sun. You know, why did you know? So I'm just talking. And of course, it's so old. But it'd be interesting to have converted that one because for peaking and stuff. So mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, all things shall be answered. I. <laughs> it seems to me. Or not. I mean, if you had access to water where it could flow through. Mm -hmm. If you're pumping, man. 
Yeah, Steve. Um, you know, the pump storage is an idea that it's it's in Colorado already. Excel has one above Idaho Spring. You pump something up right, to right. A, a, a concrete line and it comes downhill. You use three units of energy to get two back. Is that what it is? That, uh, something like that. Something in that like range. That. <laughs> well, so you don't necessarily have to have flowing water to have pump storage. Right. You know, you can have, you, as long as you got a straw that comes from a water source right. to get you stored in. Uh, so, however, there'll be evaporation. Who knows how they'll deal with that and so yeah. on. Uh, that, that would be a big issue. They, about Ortis, it says it's a subsidiary of Ortis Climate Mitigation, a meta platform founded by four industry veterans with deep expertise in the renewable energy and alternative investment sectors. I noticed it didn't say deep pockets. Uh, <laughs> is, yes, does the term Zephyr come in there? <laughs> It doesn't say that they That's have where the it comes in. Yeah. But if you call them, I'm sure they'll tell you they do. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you. I just so, but they'll make hey, we do plan a presentation yeah. so we can get yeah. the particular. I just sort of wanted to pretend like I had an idea before the team. So I think now. Yeah. And they have requested to sit down with uh, me and Rick and uh, our water attorney and discuss. You know the water rights issues. I really think the city needs to go back to having a water committee, but that's for another time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we have well, well, I used to just the name Sam Houston, Houston puts a question mark. <laughs> 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 you from Texas? Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. I, I lived there for a while. <laughs> the uh, the we we might. If we wanted to be really mean to those people, we could invite the water board to hear their oh, presentation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're giving Doug ideas. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is a public meeting. And if they want to bring up the sports yeah. session. Right. Yeah, Black Hills would love to have somebody else on the firing line. Um, <laughs> You, you know, can I, tell them, Doug. You, you can tell them that they have to decide whether it's pitchforks or tar and feathers. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't matter when it's your time. Yeah. <laughs> when you heat the tar with solar. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Please invite me to that meeting. The, Not the private one, but. It's a schedule. Well, it's our it's it's be the 20th schedule. schedule. <laughs> It'll be the 20th. Okay. So I will revise our meetings and schedule and take us through April. And that'll give us at least after we hear from the uh, on that, then we'll then we'll know we'll have a little better idea of how we're gonna go and what we're gonna have to do to get there. Um, but so you did, you did the, one of the things that, uh, that they had at that webinar was the JD Power Survey, yeah, which I just provided everybody, which I thought was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Did they talk about that? Uh, well, they, they didn't really, they just kind of mentioned, um, they have a slide, I'll put it that way, I hope mm -hmm. you get that slide, showing what they call the bottom 11 out of 121 companies around the country. And they were talking about Maine as a company that serves Maine, but I'm looking at the slide and I see Black Hills in there. So <laughs> that's what made me then go and, and take a look at the more information about the Maine Power Survey. But it, it's what, and thanks for including it, John. It's you know it's a survey of residential customers um, just regarding overall customer satisfaction, and so I think that. I will so when I was with Excel, I can't speak for today, but they Excel took this very seriously. And so I don't know if Black Hills what they analyze it or what they do, but it is very <laughs> highly digested and analyzed in to say, okay, what could be different? What really were they looking at? So this is a good thing to look at. If, if I can just comment on that, if I may. Sure. Um, that is a this is a tool that we use. Um, it is something that a task force was assigned to early or late, excuse me, late 2021. Um, and 
for all of the, our utilities across all eight states. Um, we are diving into exactly how to improve those scores. One of the things that we have found is that communication is desired, but communication about what and how is a little bit more tenuous. Um, and how much? You know, and, and it goes a little bit to frequency of, of um, JD Power is very much about perception. Um, and so how much do you advertise? How much are you on the television? How much are you saying? And so it is a little bit, I'm, I'm gonna talk about industry experts. So not, not myself. I have heard this called a little bit more of a pay to play kind of JD Power is because it is so, it's a, based on frequency and, and recall. That said, we still use this tool. It is still what we are measuring ourselves by in terms of our effectiveness of communication. So it is something we're paying attention to. So John, you know that do they do um, survey every year regarding electricity? They actually do it. They do quarterly, and and what so what you see is is basically that you you get a year, but every quarter it falls off. It's a rolling twelve month that we're analyzing. So if this came during storm Uri, <laughs> that might be a problem. Issues could occur. So That's issues, yeah. Correct. So yeah, was this number for Black Hills? Significantly different from the issue. The reason we are taking it so seriously is because we are trying to improve that number. Colorado has struggled more than some of our other um, our other jurisdictions, and we're trying to because and we're communicating the same in all of those areas, and so we're trying to figure out how we how we get better at it. But was this number lower than like twenty twenty rolling average? Or? So our no, I you know I don't I can't recall off top of my head, but I can tell you that the reason that there is a task force assigned to it is because we don't feel like we're meeting our expectations. Well, and I'm sure you saw the intermountain cores. I didn't even look. There, mm -hmm. It's on the last page here, oh, they and they're blocks. next to last. And so it would be interesting to have a follow-up question sent to them since we're sort of looking at the J.D. Power results of Black Hills or whatever. Why does, inter why does core think theirs are so low? I mean, I can make some assumptions, but I won't. Right. But Kathy, note that the, the average in the survey is 745, which is exactly what course. Exactly. Exactly. Well, so, it's different by region. So well, if you yeah, look I at guess their I'm, region, they're that, 787. That was the national. That was the national. Oops, are, look, are they on the last page, it says that? No. No, no that's on no, the no. first page. Oh. oh, okay. I was looking at <clears> Gotcha. The fact that they don't show up on the West mid size. Probably yeah. means they're in some different category. Yeah. And it all depends, frankly, on the size and the demographics. Yeah, I mean, they really so parse this thing yeah. a million different ways. Absolutely. And the, I have a hunch that JD Power believes that but their algorithm for evaluating answers to questions is very proprietary. Yeah, yes. exactly. No. Just ask the car dealerships and the team manufacturers. I mean, if if you've got if you've got a list. Of things, if you do well, you're you're going to have satisfied customers. That's one thing, you know. But that that problem that list probably is not really the basis of this. They use different metrics, I would guess. And for instance, they say promoting economic development efforts can increase your score. Basically, <laughs> promoting economic development efforts. So you get you score higher if your company. Has uh, economic development mm -hmm. PR area essentially. What is that? And I'm, this is a question that I don't know the answer to. Is that based on customer perception of that effort? Of course. Is it based on something else? Yeah, yeah. Perception. Is perception. So it will, JD Power will tell you we are a perceptive survey, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it is perception, it's what people yes. believe about the company that they're exploring. Perception right. is reality. Yes. Absolutely. Well, I, mean, I, I agree with that. Perception is all highly important. It's concerned about it. Yeah. Yeah. Who pays for the study? So you you um, are included regardless of whether or not JD Power conducts it. Um, if you want to get access, I believe then you, you pay for the access and you pay for the reports and you pay for some industry expertise. Because we get a quarterly, we actually get a quarterly call with JD Power to go through and assess not only ours, but how, we, how we're working comparatively. And then, you know, and they're helping us to connect with 
other mid-sized regionals that are scoring well so we can compare what they're doing to what we're doing and see if we can you know adopt some of those things so that's kind of where we're at right now and, and what this says is that these uh this study is based on responses from 101,000 people essentially conducted january through november last year um, of the 145 largest electric utility brands. Well, so you've had a three day outage the day they call you. <laughs> you know, that so. was Storm Uri, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, November, December, January. Yeah. 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 February was Uri. Was it? Well, yeah. it was in 15th, 19th, something. So I don't mean to go backwards, but I, I think I missed some things on mm -hmm. three C. Rate increase. Oh, we haven't, we haven't done that. Oh, um, yes, that's correct. Uh, I, I, did, I did jump ahead to this. Uh, so, John, you did send us the slides on the rate increases. Is there anything you'd like to say on that? Or I, I, this was just in response to, to Ryan's request. We shared with you the residential. And again, I, I want to just make sure that you all understand this is a representation of an all in customer's bill. Um, between the period and the increases they have experienced between the two years, it's 2012 and 2021. And uh, this is not our data. The survey is, is conducted by the Colorado Association of Municipal Utilities. And so as, um, as participants in that survey, we, every six months, share with them what our all-in customer's bill is. And that's what every other respondent can and should do. Um, not everybody does, and not everybody does it consistently. And, and I can only say that because I see the data. So I know there are times when somebody only reports once a year, or they miss a year, or they miss you know every six months. Um, we are pretty religious. When I say pretty religious, we use this as well. Um, so we're pretty religious about sending it. I do see errors occasionally. Um, they had an error in our July bill. They suggested, I think we were at 129, which is, was inaccurate. Um, we asked for a correction, but they basically said, look, it's every six months. By the time we correct yeah. it, yeah. Um, okay. we're going to, you know, you'll have another one coming out. So we're not going to worry about it. So I guess the way I couch that is just, first of all, in fairness to everybody and anybody, we're only taking the data that Cam shares with us. Um, that said, um, the other thing I like to point out is this is so this is all in customer bill, all three classes from 2012 to 2021. And you'll see that our rates have stayed pretty stable across you know all three customer classes. Now, I also will tell you this. Remember, we are not in charge of our rates. So this has some PUC impact as well. When we did the, the phase two reallocation, you read in the report that Residential customers, they, they did do some rate mitigation, Im, rate impact mitigation, which means that they cost shifted in that a little bit. And so, you know, I'm not sitting here claiming that we are the end all be all and it's all our doing. But here's what I will tell you that as we talk about this data from 2012 and when PAGS came on for recovery, that $400 million of investment you'll see that we have substantially operated the business in a way that has prevented us from increasing our bills. And that's our commitment and that's what we're continuing to try and do. So this is, this really speaks to what Vance has said for the last three and a half years that I've worked here, which is we're committed to rate stability for our customers. And I think what it kind of illustrates is, look, nobody's, nobody's shying away from the fact that we made those investments but you are reaping some reward from those investments over time. So, oh, sorry. But, but the, as I understand it, there's a difference between the customer's bill and the customer's rate, which are, they're not the same thing. That, that's correct. Okay, so, so I just wanna point out that you were kind of going weaving back right, before right, saying bill, right, rate, right. but that's not really what we're talking about here. We're talking about bill. And so the reason we talk about bill is because that includes everything that impacts everything. the customer. It, customer. It, includes, it includes demand charges. It includes, it includes legislation. You know, there was $4 added to customers' bills in this last legislative session, roughly. So, so, so we're, we're sophisticated about 
to know that there is a difference. So please, please make sure that. Yep. Yep. You know, yep. When you say no, that. I. So when we talk about, and we do talk about that, we talk about bill stability. That's really at the end of the day, it's what you're paying, and so that's what we're trying to manage. So that was my question as well. But so that these numbers include all the writers. Correct. All the charges. And again, I will just again full disclosure if you're. If you live in a city versus outside of a city, it may or may not have that 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 franchise fee on your bill. So, I I guess I couldn't find that answer. I don't know that exact answer. Which okay. what what Colorado number we use? But I assume it's within a city because most of our franchises are three percent. Do you have franchises that are not three percent? Um, you know, John, I I don't think so. I think most of them have been three. Um, I did have, I have one municipality right now that was considering increasing it, um, but I don't think they're going to do that. The, the, during negotiations with, with Black Hills, which was with Vance, uh, basically we talked about that. That was a point of discussion during the negotiations. Uh, and what the, what the answer from Black Hills was on changing, increasing, perhaps increasing the franchise fee rate because we we're looking at that time we were looking at that one uh, the undergrounding fund yeah right Never mind. sorry I brought uh, it up. and what <laughs> what what the answer was My fault. perhaps from the legal team too was that was that all the franchises have a clause in there that if anybody gets a better deal they all get it yeah, and so that that so I believe that you either have the a maximum of, of what I believe is Black Hills has a maximum franchise fee of three percent, and that there are there could be something underneath that or none, like us. Sure. You know. Yeah, you can definitely you definitely have the ability to to negotiate that as part of that. And I did mention in our presentation the way that we're doing it right now on gross sales is only one method. There's two alternative methods: a flat fee and volumetric. And so. You know, if the city wanted those models so they could understand how that could impact their franchise, certainly welcome to do that. Um, we're happy to, to do that for you, but there are other opportunities beyond just the way that we're doing it today. I appreciate that. Appreciate That's hearing good. that. And that is something that we may take up. Has uh, Black Hills ever thought about putting the franchise fee in the base rates? You know, Kathy, you brought that up before. I actually asked our regulatory team, and they said that Excel does not do Really? Yeah, they, in fact, they pulled up the bill and said it's right there. So, is it okay? So, yeah, okay. that's not, that's not, not such common. Practice. Okay, good to know because it used to be that way. Okay. There's a problem and that is that it's, that the percentages are on, when you look at right. the bill, the percentages are on things above. Everything above. And not, a, not the bottom line. So right. that and wouldn't, I don't think wouldn't that would help. Work. Okay. okay. Yeah, you're right. It's on the, okay. Well, and. I can't remember, I'd have to pull out my bill, what, which I have with me, but when we were paying a franchise fee, whichever one came first on this huge bill, sales tax or franchise fee, the percentage was being computed on the one above it. In other words, we were taxing a tax. And I still say that's something we should look back at to make sure, I mean, it shouldn't have been done and that's only my opinion. No, but I number agree. two, did, we, did the city actually Collect a tax on their tax. Yes, we, we can only drop. If, if we could only get the IRS to agree with that. Sure. that be good. <laughs> I mean, they seem to tax my income a couple of different ways. <laughs> okay. Um, anybody have anything else today? I, I just wanted to make a quick comment if I remember right. So Andrea Stein was here last time. She was asking about the years before 2012. And so I didn't know if there was additional information being provided about that. Um, I certainly go all the way back to the 80s. I, I've actually got a spreadsheet, I think goes back to late 80s, early 90s. Um, by and large, what you see between then and 1998 or nine, maybe two. Now it's even later than that. but. By and large, what you see is we were buying energy for the most part. We had an Excel contract and we were purchasing energy. 80% so, for Pueblo. Yeah, so we were, it was largely dictated by that contract. Um, and then you did see 
um, a substantial increase, which is what I always talk about because I want to be transparent. It's the four years between when we decided to when that when we decided to replace that contract and we brought all that investment from from PAG. So you'll see, you know, if you wanted to look at that, I would almost guess it's probably a 34 to 35 percent increase. I can't remember the number, but I've seen it, and I don't shy away from it. It just it, it's not to me. It is germane, but it's not. I mean, oh, it might be helpful. You know, to just look at that span of years from 08 or whatever, just in the context of the whole. Sure. So, any other discussion or comments for yeah. today? Oh, no. uh, yeah. I have one <coughs> offering. Um, uh -huh. um, Back in 2017, 2018, I did a bunch of case studies on cities that broke away from their investor-owned utility. There were about one a year in the four, in the past four decades. Some of them have been successful. Some of them have been mixed. Some of them have not done so well. In fact, the largest one, Long Island, Little Co. I don't think did well. Um, would you be an interest? Interested in, I could present maybe 15 minutes of information on those case studies and give you a one page summaries of each of the cities in terms of when they did it, what it cost, what the impact was on their rates, and that's it. Did Long Island break away? Yeah, Long Island broke away from because Long Island had the highest rates yeah. forever. Yeah, and they broke away and it didn't help a lot. That's what I was going to say, unfortunately. Didn't help. That would, I, I would welcome that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 Whenever you want that down the road. Um, In the next 15 minutes. How good are you? May I ask if the, if the committee would like for me to explore a date um, to, and, and see what we to share with you in terms of our 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 service and our facility and my thoughts are we could you know it's as much time as you would like to spend we could probably get down to the wind farm in the fort mill valley we could get up to pags you know like i'm open to doing and scheduling that if you all would like to do that well i'm i'm open myself my my you know the i've been by wind farms <laughs> i know i don't know that i that that holds any fascination for me but that's my Personal sure. sort of thing, the the but being in the control room, you know, power decisions are made on a second by second basis. You know, sure. So the tags were okay. But does that does that sound okay, or does that, someone have a? Do you have is does Colorado have like I call it the war games, like our lookout center shows the whole western grid and everything else. Do you guys have anything like that? Or I would South Dakota. Okay, I figured as but much. It, but well, it feeds through the decision making, the, the, yeah. the load balancing here. Yeah. yeah. Plus but the fact it's a pretty secure. So if I black think hills and pay for our trip, maybe we should go see yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> All you would see is a black wall because I can't get in there either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So back to Steve's proposal. Mm -hmm. Are we scheduling that for a particular date? Next time. Yeah, I would say sure. Next time, February fourteenth. Sure. Okay. Will you be through the other eight thousand pages of the other report? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, you know, some people see count sheep and so on. I just count lines <laughs> flowing by. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever sleep? Yeah. Not so well, but I do. <laughs> so we may not. It may not have the. the we've got a couple of things we can talk about next time. But it may not be an extensive agenda for next time because we're kind of in the holding pattern. Sure. Yeah. You know, I'm yeah. telling you first. Yeah. yeah. More so, so I think that's what he's he responsible for this. Is that what Steve is? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, somehow, yeah. I read that was true on that. I thought what? what I told you was going to be said to us about a new lady. No. Okay. Oh, no. no. All right. Just want to be happy. Yeah. It's on the agenda. No. Yeah, scared of when I thought it was Well, then I think we're done. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.